testing. Yep, sorry, there we go. Microphone, I keep forgetting, defaults itself to off. So let's let's nip back to the first page and start again. Welcome everyone to the first uh, to the video update for the 8th of February 2016. Uh, apologies for the lateness of the stream. Um, just couldn't get anything running and loads of technical problems and finally everything going. So here we are. I do apologise for the loss of sound at the start there as well. That's me not pressing a button on the microphone to make that light go on, if you can see it. Um, so, you all got the uh, update, hopefully, the, the Kickstarter announcement and the, the website announcement to say that we're doing an update today. So here we go. Um, okay, progress report this week. Um, again, more work on the combat sim. Uh, that's pretty much the focus of all the work at the moment. We are uh, sort of coming towards the end of that, and now I think uh, Colin's been doing some playtesting with it, and it seems to work fairly well. We need to lock down some of the weapons, stats, and hardpoint layouts for the ships, and what the default contents for them will be. And I think that's the biggest part of it done. Then at that point, and it's then on to me to do the um, the modules, as far as I'm aware. And that's the biggest part. The, that's the biggest part of the crossover between the miniatures game and the RPG will be the modules, the design of them, the price of them, and the way the little cartlets will represent the stats for those in the actual game. So, uh, this week we've pretty much finished off the movement methods. Um, we've done a few tweaks over the last couple of weeks on that and the testing from um, Colin's point of view says that that's working pretty well, so we're quite happy with that. Uh, we've started looking at some of the graphics and some of the little bits and pieces, so tokens for power management and other little bits and pieces have been done. Uh, we've got them ready to go and Colin told me th today that he's quite happy with them, so yay! Um, and we've had a bit of a redesign, uh, sorry, a bit of a design uh, bash out on some of the module weapon and cardlet things that are going to go into the game. Uh, so we're just working on basically graphics really. Um, okay, one of the things I said we'd have a look at would be um, how we're going to make the combat sim uh, and miniatures rules work with the narrative rules. So how will it integrate into the RPG? How will the stats and cards and templates and all the stuff we've got in the miniatures game feed back into the RPG? Uh, this is a slightly different way of doing it from what I'm used to, because when I've done this before, usually I've battered out the, the narrative rules first, and then started looking at ways of representing stuff visually. visually. Um, but working with Colin on this, we've sort of decided to have a look at it the other way around, and it's kind of made things a little bit easier in some ways, but a little bit more difficult in others. So I don't want to go rampantly running through the uh, the rules uh, that I've got so far that have been kind of tested to death and work quite well and then completely overhaul them. One of the tenets we used for the start of this process was to make sure that everything that went into the miniatures game <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Dry throat today. Um, one of the design tenets we had was to try and make sure that the narrative always won't be too much compromised by changes made in order to accommodate the miniatures uh, concepts into it in the combat simulation concepts. So it's looking good so far. Um, so as I say, we have to make sure that the concepts are carried through to the main rules. Uh, the main part of that, as it says in the next section, is the elements that would work better in the combat sim. So the hex trackers have been the biggest kind of casualty in the miniatures rules design because we have decided that uh, sorry, no, actually not we. I decided, uh, sort of right at the very start of the process, that the hex trackers, although they did get me through a certain point, a, a certain mind block at one point, have proved to be not as versatile as I thought they were. They've allowed me to represent things and to give up a decent amount of stats and have given me a good baseline for stats in the game. Um, but as, as a method of actually tracking what's going on, they're not that friendly, uh, very small. So. We've decided for the miniature rules and the combat sim that essentially just going for writing numbers in boxes or using tokens to represent things would be a much better way of doing things. And it has worked out that way. Uh, even the little sort of basic thought I've given it and the basic tests I've given it seem to have indicated that it's a lot more user friendly for you to have those big boxes to write in or something like that to make it much better. Cardlets have proved to be quite an interesting little concept. Um, cardlets are a one quarter size because we're going for business card size for the um, the ship cards, uh, the vehicle cards. Sorry, um, and so we've used a quarter size of that for cardlets, which just a little bits of little cards that show you information for modules, uh, weapons, um, 
crew starts, that kind of thing. So something that wouldn't that doesn't warrant a full size card, you can fit it on these quarter size cards, and it works pretty well. So are they useful for the other aspects of the game? Well, um, in a sense, they could be. Um, what I may look at is a uh, if I've got enough time before we come to the, to my deadline. Um, I might actually look at seeing if we can have some like the personal weapons or armor or something like that. Personal weapons, especially, would be a very good thing to use uh, these cartlets for. So rather than having to write them on the sheet on on the character sheet or the avatar record files, I've called it, you actually have all the stats you need for it on one of these little cartlets, and you'd have an ammo tracker cartlet which would let you track what the ammo is. Um, there are a few things that have come off the back of that that have made me think that there are ways that I've done things in the main rules like little characterization aspects or equipment aspects for example using battery power, battery packs, power packs for uh, laser weapons I've kind of gone off that idea and I want to try and say that well rather than actually having to rearm it or put a new battery pack in it you've got to wait for it to cool down um, so you have a maximum amount of shots before it overheats and then you can cool it down from there so that's one thing I'm toying with at the moment the cardlets aspect of it has kind of highlighted that. So the card is yes I think they would be a useful thing so we're gonna to have to see if if there'd be enough kind of scope for that to work and as I've said we have uh, um, some thought to do, uh, I have some thought to do to see if that's actually worth kind of backtracking the concepts on and doing that. So as my door is actually sitting wide open that's not gonna be very friendly for the rest of people in the house. So yeah that's that's that so that's pretty much the idea. Uh, apologies for the lack of the, the quality of these um, little graphics here. Uh, they've been blown up quite a lot because they're meant to be like one, those little tokens at the bottom are meant to be like a one centimetre squared. And uh, yeah, I've blown them up to 720 resolution. It hasn't done them any favours, but they do look a lot nicer in the in the, in the, in the actual uh, print off, in the actual uh, game pack. So, cardless and tokens are one of the sort of little elements of the game. So, we've had some, we're trying to do some graphics work and get that finalised. Um, so cardlets, as I say, are the little quarter size information cards. There's some samples of them there. The crew stats one is the most important one really for the uh, for the miniatures rules as as, as such. Um, so you've got, they're actually meant to be used vertically but you can hold them horizontally and vertically whichever way it is makes it easier. But tactical piloting and gunnery and systems are your, your essential stats for your crew. Um, the CR mod is a combat rating mod, so you may have a combat rating, you may have an elite rating as a crew member um, and that modification, that modifier would be written in there to give you some benefits in the game. The weapon cardlet there is a pulse laser, uh, that's the basic weapon that everything's fitted with at the start of the game and you've got the two tokens there. Uh, your power token is the blue one and your high G maneuver one is the red one there, so that's just some samples of stuff that's going on. So how does it all look when it's stuck together? Well, this is the concept card. Uh, one of the concept cards. Uh, these are the eco-friendly black and white ones, and I've spent some time today going through some of the graphics and trying to make them a little bit clearer, because I wasn't overall impressed with the look of these little cardlets when you print them out. These little cards when you print them out. Because the ship diagrams were actually quite indistinct. So I've spent some time today sharpening them up a bit, uh, darkening them up, and making them at least visible properly. So this represents a, pow a balanced power layout. So if your default your default ship at the start of the game will have a balanced power layout. So you'll have three power points to spend. So you can have one point each on engines, which is the man and speed on the card there, um, the shields and the weapons. So one power in each section: firepower, man speed, and shields. Ah. <sighs> Just give me one second. Someone's just told me my stream's been redirected. Um, so hopefully it will still be recording. Oi. Um, yeah, well, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do it. Apparently I've not redirected. I'm still hosting Mad Dog at this point. And uh, obviously this stream hasn't gone out live. Unhost. So I'll just unhost that for now. And I'll use my personal recording of it to carry on. Thanks, Stephen. So, yes. Um, so that's a balanced power layout. So that's how it would look as normal. There we go. 
um yeah so oh god it's been a hell of a night so this this cartlet is a token that has had the shields power token redirected to engines so there is now two power points in engines and no power points in shields that would then mean you can stack the tokens on the card physically or you can write in what what you've assigned and basically the, if you were not using the tokens then at the little place where the token was you would write zero in shields and you write two in the one next to man and speed whichever one it is that you've reallocated and uh, you can write the modifiers on there to give you a bit of an aid memoir as to how things work and there you go so that's one of the things we've kind of worked on quite a lot over the last few weeks uh, and that's pretty much it for this update so it's been a bit of a disaster this update but hopefully the YouTube video will be a little better uh, because you'll hopefully see it and it won't just be a Mad Dog stream up until the point where I realised thanks to Stephen Carey that I hadn't unhosted Mad Dog so thankfully I don't really see there's anyone actually viewing this so I think I'll I'll call it a, a lucky save so yep yeah, upcoming events April now I seem to remember seeing something that um, Elite Meet was Elite was January th uh, April the second, which makes sense because the seventh is th it's a Thursday. Um, so yeah, I've got my dates wrong there. I do apologise for that, but we'll uh, we'll try and get that sorted, and I'll I'll fix that. So yeah, April second, Glasgow Elite Meet. Still not sure if I'm going to make it. It's not one of those things that I think we're going to get to this year because I have a lot of other things going on and obviously need to get this book sorted out so uh, Lave Condo we will be there because that could be post release of the game fingers crossed on that one uh, so next stream will be next Monday 15th of February 8pm UK time if you have any comments queries or questions then please get them to me by Monday by next Monday the 6th uh, sorry by next Monday at 6 and I'll put them in the broadcast sorry again no feedback nothing this week has come in so uh, a few YouTube thumbs ups though uh, on some of the some of the uh, broadcasts. So thank you for them, whoever that was, and uh, most appreciated. But uh, yeah, if you can drop a comment as well, just let me know what you thought was worth a thumbs up. Then that would be lovely. So yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. I apologise if it's been a bit of a a bitty broadcast, especially if you're watching it live. But uh, hopefully on YouTube it shouldn't be quite as bad. Although I do keep mentioning it, so I really should stop doing that. So take care, everyone. Bye bye.